two, one. Minus flat on the canvas. We are ready to rock and roll. Second round of action. There is a cut on Minus. Yeah. It's just <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Jesus. Martial Jack. My man B-Hop, he got knocked out, dropped out the ring last night. <laughs> <laughs> I need a little judo baby. I need me a little judo baby. And uh, let's, let's do it, Ron. Let's, let's hit me up. You see what they me next? You got face for video. I've got face for video. Martial Lodge. Chat. Hello and welcome to the Martial Arts Chat Podcast live here on Speaker. On tonight's show we're talking with Brian Lacey and Kyle Steele and we'll be getting the panel's predictions ahead of UFC 217 and later of course we'll be answering your fan questions. Thank you for everybody who got in touch. Remember you can still hit me up on the live stream. We're at facebook.com forward slash martial arts chat or we're on Twitter at Martial Arts Chat, but at this time, let me introduce our panel. You've probably heard or seen him somewhere on the Loudmouth Network by now, and of course, on the Nicolas Cage movie review, ever one of my favourites, and he's stepping up at the last minute. He comes in, he makes a wait, and he joins us at the round table. It's Mr. Kyle Steele. Kyle, how you doing, my friend? You, you guys added a super heavyweight division? That's good. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing great, John. Thanks for having me. Excellent to have you on, mate. And fighting at the red corner, also giving his predictions ahead of UFC 217. He's all over the podcast and world with Christian O'Connell, with Brad Pickett. He's the voice of ACB alongside the legend Frank Mir. Mr. Brian Lacey. Brian, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing well, but I didn't realise there was weigh-ins. I've just had a, uh, a massive plate of pasta, so I, I, I too, am um, pretty much hitting heavyweight now. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> super heavyweight night. I like it, guys. Let's get straight into uh, to the main card. And speaking of missing weight, Mr. Johnny Hendricks he takes on. <laughs> oh, I went there. No, sorry, Johnny. Ladies I'm and sorry, gentlemen, mate. that's called I'm a sorry. professional segue. I'm sorry, Johnny. <laughs> but has anyone seen the pictures recently? The one in the hot tub about the. Uh, I think he was in with the whole because he's training at Jackson's now, right? Um, it didn't look great, man. I know he's always struggled with welterweight. I thought middleweight would have been. Ooh, I thought that would have been an easier cut, but it never really seems to be the case when you're dealing with Johnny Hendricks and he's taking on. <laughs> I'm going to butcher this guy's name. Is it Paolo Boroshinia? How did I do? Boroshinia. You did as well, mate. Nailed it. That'll do oh, no, a stab in the dark. Oh, well done. <laughs> Pat on the back for me. Well, let's start with Kyle on this one. Kyle. Um, your thoughts and your predictions on this uh, opening fight in the middleweight division? Sure. Yeah. So I think on the main card, this is the one that I have the um, probably the worst read on. Uh, I, I'm going to go Paulo, uh, but listen, you know his his first fight in the UFC, he knocked out Gareth. That essentially means nothing, right? Mm -hmm, Basically, it means nothing. Um, He's Brazilian, so because he's Brazilian, everything before the UFC, you kind of have to take with a grain of salt uh, because a lot of it is uh, pretty pretty fluffed. So he gets his UFC debut. He beats up Gareth, which is essentially like beating up a child. It doesn't really count. Uh, He then (laughs) goes on in his next fight and fights one of the ugliest, worst ring IQ fights uh, in recent memory against Oluwa Bambose. So, listen, I think he gets it done here. I think Johnny Hendricks is shot. I think he's been shot for quite some time. He's been TKO'd, you know, within the last year and a half or so. And Paulo, say what you want about him. He kind of reminds me of Derek Brunson a little bit. You know, this is a guy who... Seemingly has no ring IQ, but boy, when he lands a shot, he lands it and he lands it uh, with a purpose. So I think he gets it done here. I think he probably gets it done uh, via a TKO. But uh, my caution would be, again, very, very poor ring IQ. And at the end of the day, Johnny Hendricks has been there. He's been in the big show. He's been tested. Uh, Don't be surprised if he is able to eke out a very ugly decision against a guy who's you know doesn't seem like he's super smart uh, once he's in the octagon. I mean, I, I know I'm starting off with slag and, uh, and good points, mate, about uh, you know Johnny Hendricks' weight and all the rest of it. But yeah, it's, it's one to remember that he is uh, you know a decorated uh, wrestler um, and, and and has been in the title picture, albeit it was at welterweight. He's been in the big fights. Yeah, so as you're right, it's important to remember that. And um, a dirty fight and a grinding out fight is something a wrestler like him, I'm sure, would relish. Brian, what would you make of this fight, and, and what's, um, what's your predictions going into this one? I think I think it all depends on the, uh, and this is the, the problem with Johnny Hendricks now. That it's never about the fight. We're always wondering about the weigh-ins. We're always wondering what condition he's coming in. He's yeah. moved up to middleweight. He's still missing weight. He's uh, one and four in his last five, which is just a terrible run in form. 
when you uh, sort of juxtapose that to, to the run of form that got him the title shot where he went through uh, five or six opponents, including Koscheck, Campman, Condit, Fitch. Um, and that was a different Johnny Hendricks. Then he bought himself a restaurant, <laughs> the big rib restaurant. <laughs> then he, he it's never a good rib, sign. He had his own rib sauce. And then since then, the the, the problem is like, it's never just about the fight. We are going to be waiting until he steps on those scales to yeah. see what state, no matter what yeah. camp he's in. And that's the thing. We, we can talk about him being a decorated wrestler and have been in the big fights. The problem is he's never learned the lesson. This is, this is the stage of the career where um, I think that second loss, um, or the, the loss to um, uh, George St. Pierre, which arguably he, he won. A lot of people thought he won, he won that fight. Um, it's, he's never really recovered from it properly. The same with the Lawler as well. When he went through those... Uh, that fight yeah. and mentally something is not right with Johnny Hendricks and it almost feels like he's chasing uh yeah he's, he's physically he's he's struggling and mentally he's yeah he's not he's not the fighter he was so I I think Paolo will, will go through him again I think that could be it for Johnny Hendricks I'm absolutely surprised that um this is actually a main card fight with the issues they've had with with Hendricks I'm surprised this is opening up I think Vic versus Duffy is a much better opening fight for uh, for such a, a, a supreme main main card, um, but again, uh, it all comes down to w- w- whether D- Jackson's has changed him or not. What what the, the head, uh, how the head is of Johnny Hendricks coming into this fight? Yeah, you're absolutely right, and that's Agreed. a good point about um, you know UFC taking a risk on a guy who, yeah, you're right, he's not exactly reliable, is he? Um, he's just, just not the same. Yes, I'm shitting all over you Johnny Hendricks. It. I'm sorry, but yeah, you're right. He isn't the same. You know, <laughs> another thing I was going to ask same. you guys actually. You, you mentioned about his, his string of victories he put together there, Brian. That's when he had knockout power, and that seems to have disappeared. What was your thoughts on that, mate? I, th- I, th- I think it's, it's disappeared because he's cutting weight so badly. He's not coming in with the sort of. Uh, uh, energy, the strength. He's, he's draining himself so badly because he's managing right. those weight cuts. And also in that period, that was the period he was with um, uh, Mike Dolce. If you look through those string of wins, Mike Dolce was with him through that. Then he refused to, to keep him going because he didn't like to pay 30% of his purse to Dolce. Then all the weight problems came. And then via that, that's where the performance problems are coming in as well. So I, I honestly think it's all linked. And I think it's down to uh, to, to Hendricks not... Really, like he's he's a great wrestler. He's got the ethic uh, in the gym. I'm sure he's an absolute nightmare to spar with. I can guarantee that. But yeah. when it comes to that bit where he's got to cut weight, he's um, he, he shouldn't cut that corner. Pay, pay the thirty percent. Pay fifty percent of your purse and be the fighter that you can be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I had also forgot um, that he he did get knocked out by Tim Boach. I completely right. forgot that that that's was right. less than six months ago. I mean. Yeah, that's uh, when you're going up against a guy again. Ring ring IQ aside, I mean you're going up against a guy that has real tangible power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you just got knocked out by Tim Boach, who's also kind of in the twilight of his career, yeah. I mean Jesus, what well, what do you think Paulo's going to do? I mean, boy, yeah, that's a uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> a, I, I probably am a little bit more confident in Paulo now that I just remembered that Tim Boach knocked him out four <laughs> months ago. Yeah. I mean, it was four months ago. It was, yeah. I think it was, yeah, it was almost literally four months ago. I'm looking at it right now, June 25th. So wow. that's just, yeah, that's, yeah, he's getting knocked out. <laughs> Go KO's predictions like it. Well, let's move on to Stephen Wonderboy Thompson and a guy who I always rave about is uh, Masvidal. I mean, I'm really looking forward to the striking, but then. I know he's not known for his striking, Tyron Woodley, but I said that going into that rematch with Wonderboy Thompson, and I know he has this style of, you know, he's not the aggressor, he's the counter striker, so he's got a, not got to, what am I trying to say? He he likes to wait on the other guy going first, if you like, but I just don't think Masvidal's going to be the kind of guy that's, you know, going to pot shot and come in and out and pot shot and come in and out like a Tyron Woodley would. He'll be so aggressive and just so all over them that he'll have to, fo- and maybe this is wishful thinking, but that aside, I think the massive Dal will just it won't allow for that kind of fight to happen and that's really what what makes this as an exciting fight is Thompson has all the tools when he wants to and Masvidal has the style to bring the best out of Thompson, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I'm really looking forward to that fight because of Jorge Masvidal. But I'll start with Brian on this one. Brian, what do you make of this fight and, and what's your prediction, sir? I got goosebumps just thinking about it, mate. What a, what a, what a fight this is to be signed. Masvidal, one of the baddest MFs ever to do it. Um, 
Like he's he coming through the street fighting ranks. He was on the Kimbo Slice street fighting videos. He's been doing it since he was uh, in high school, earning money off of fighting on the streets. And Stephen Wonderboy Thompson is the, one of the cleanest cut uh, martial artists and fantastic martial artists as well uh, that you'll ever get. And and just feeling the the collision of these two, I think Masvidal is going to bring. I think he's got a. Uh, um, it, it, since he moves up in weight, he's uh, he's got that confidence. He might have lost that Maya fight, but he gained credit throughout the um, MMA world for the performance he put on, how he could handle Maya on his back, and uh, the the way he brings a fight, the way he can bring the pressure, is phenomenal. And that's, I I I believe his is some of the best in MMA, and I think that that is going to be the the key. I think he's going to close the distance and negate those kicks. And um, I, I think Vidal can can. Brothers Thompson, and I think he can finish him. I mean, that'll put him right back up there. I would love to see him. I was going to say against Colby Covington, but that's a team of his. But um, I would love to see him up against Tyrone Woodley. I, I think that that is a he, he can drag out of uh, out of any body just because of that that thing. We've got a martial artist on one side and Stephen Thompson, and we have just got mm-hmm. a born fighter yeah. in Masvidal. Can't wait for this. Yeah, definitely, mate. Kyle, what do you make of this, and uh, and and also your predictions for this uh, awesome. as well to wait for? Yeah, uh, so I'm going to concur with Brian there. This is a a fight that I'm really looking forward to. You know, when it comes to the kind of rock, paper, scissors, that is is MMA styles, uh, boxing or karate tends to not fare out very well to boxing. Boxing tends to be the equalizer to karate. Um, However, American kickboxing kind of trumps boxing a little bit. And let's not forget that Stephen Thompson, I believe at 57 – kickboxing fights 20 of them being professional 37 of them i believe i I'd, i'm i'm not you know i'm not looking at the numbers but i'm pretty sure it was somewhere along those lines so he was a, a no losses as a kickboxer so i'm um, a pretty accomplished kickboxer there so i think he has to turn that on here i think if he goes straight karate i think he's going to have a really hard time dealing with the forward pressure of mosfidal uh you know being a good boxer but i also would caution with mosfidal that he, he's gotten a bit inflated right so his first fight at 170 was cesar Figuera which is a win that I don't necessarily think aged very well. That was about just over two years ago. But I don't know if that win aged super well, right? Then he lost to, to Henderson and Larkin uh, in very, very close fights, uh, but but lost nonetheless. And, mm-hmm. you know, kind of look at what they did after, right? You know, and then he gets a win over Ross Pearson, a win that did not age very well. He gets that really walked out win to Jake Ellenberger, where his toe gets stuck in the fence. Now, I think he was probably on his way to winning that anyway. But again, Ellenberger, twilight of the career here, has no business even still fighting, right? That was a, that was a year ago, less than a year ago. Um, I don't know. And then he beats Donald Cerrone, a win that, again, hasn't aged you know, super well. You know, and it took him a long time to get him out of there compared to what's then happened since then. So um, I don't. I, I think Masvidal is a, a bit inflated here. He's small for the division. I got Stephen Thompson winning this. He Stephen Thompson has shown through the Warry McDonald fight and then the second fight with Woodley that he has incredible ring IQ and that he can and is not afraid, is not afraid to be boring and try to win fights, right? Yeah. Obviously, the second Woodley fight, it didn't work out, but I love that intelligence. I love that intelligence, and I love an ability to do that. Um, but again, I think if he goes straight karate, he's going to have a really big issue with that forward pressure from, from Masvidal, so he's going to need to kind of turn on that kickboxing a little bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's uh, it's going to be an exciting fight either way. And uh, I, like I said at the start there, maybe that's more wishful thinking, but I, I just can't see it any other way. This is this has all the makings of a classic, and a, uh, I'm just going to jinx it now. Fight of the night. There you go, I've said it. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's a ruin now, death now. Well, Let's move it on feels then. like Stephen Thompson oh, is due for a good fight, right? I mean, it, yeah, you know, he, had the, exactly right. he had that just crazy, you know, first fight with Woodley, you know, where he... I mean, I don't know. Just got took 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 as much damage in that one fight than he had taken in his entire career, mm-hmm. right? And then comes back and has a really boring fight that pisses a lot of people off. So <laughs> seems like he's gonna yeah. want to come out there and 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 show off his skills. Yeah, definitely. Well, let's look at Joanna Young, Jacek, and, and Thug Rose. Um, possibly another exciting fight as well. I mean, I'm saying exciting because it's either going to be dominance from from JJ, which I, I suspect it most likely will be, um, or or Thug Rose. Really, she just um, she just causes the upset. Um, going into this as 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 quite a heavy underdog, as I understand. But I'll, I'll start with Kyle this time. Kyle, what do you make of it? And um, and your predictions, obviously, from this fight. As I said, you guys smell that. I don't know if you can smell it, but. 
kind of smells like an upset. I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, I, th- I think I think Ioana gets it done here. Um, it, it's hard to bet against her, right? It's hard to bet against someone who, with with her striking acumen. Um, it's also hard to trust, you know, someone in, in Rose Namajunas that you know hasn't been. Com- if she had been completely dominant leading up to this, mm-hmm. th- then maybe I'd go there. But she got, you know, I don't know. I, I think. Um, Kolakevich, I think that was your, um, you know, what am I trying to say here? Like that, Joanna is a much better striker than Kolakevich, right? And I believe that's already kind of been proven. Hmm. So losing to her in that way, well, again, what do you think is going to happen when you fight Joanna? It's it's going to be that, but it's got to be turned up five notches. Hmm. So I just. Yeah, I have a, I have a hard time imagining that Joanna is going to be able to do do anything, or sorry, that Rose is going to be able to do anything to Joanna that Joanna hasn't seen ten times before, and then hasn't utterly destroyed ten times before. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, really, that's what it is. Anyone who's picking Rose, I understand there's there's an it factor with her, and I understand that she, you know, she has a a way she has this this kind of mode about her that you feel like she's never going to be counted out right and i think i think maybe that's what people are picking up on but anyone who's picking rose i i would definitely kind of force them to tell me what it is how is she going to win i mean you got to tell me that how is she what what is she going to bring to the table because i just i don't see it it's a hard argument mate i don't know brian what's your thoughts do you think there's an upset here yeah, I mean, I love that breakdown. That's that's. I don't, I don't think there's an upset. I I almost wish there was because I I do like the story. Of I want to see it too. This. I I also don't like the angle that Jan Jacek's coming in on with this, with constantly bringing up the mental health thing, especially off the back of um, Rose being open about the stuff, but also her partner Pat Barry talking about the troubles he's been through in the last twelve, fifteen months. So what was months, this? Sorry, so, I missed this. So she was she's, so she's on air, right? She's. Yeah, so she she during during the press conferences and the face-offs, she's calling her unhinged, uh, mentally unstable. Ooh. She's uh, she's she's shouting this down the phone at her. She's and Rose is going. I, I probably am, but I just I just think I'm almost surprised that UFC haven't sort of stepped aside or stepped in, sorry, and said to uh, and Jake just change the angle on this because mental health is such a uh, a delicate topic right now mm. across the world and and in our sport as well with um mm. uh the effects of ct and all that sort of stuff going on so i don't like the the angle that she's coming in um this so, so for that reason and also nama Yunus is a great story she's come from a, a background of being abused at home um, having to find her own way, martial arts yet again being that uh, grounding, that that focus that has yeah. turned her life around, that has given her, that given her, given her, her, us, her basically to the world. So she she climbed that ladder. She's been through struggles at home that we, she'll fa- never face as hard in the cage. So she's got that around her. She also doesn't comply to that. But there was that wonderful image that that pretty girl. Uh, they, they always try and sell them all the UFC fighters as these pretty girls. And they had um, at one of the shows. This was a long time ago. They had uh, um, Holly Holm and I think Young Jacek or somebody else and Nama Yunus all uh, sat together and they panned the camera across during the event. And Holly Holm and the others flick their hair and they wave their hands and give a little thing. And Nama Yunus just gives a stone cold killer stare. Down. She's not, not, <laughs> yeah. not playing that game. Yeah. I, love I love it. that. I absolutely yeah. love it. So cool. there's there's so but i don't think um i don't think she has got the tools physically to be able to deal with what yun jacek does what yun jacek does i consider her one of the most devastating and I, when i talk about devastating i'm not just talking about knockouts i mean the damage she can cause to mm. people with um with her elbows with her knees with her strikes on top of the cardio and that that just relentlessness in the case there's no quitting her she is she mentally is um like she, like she keeps going i'm number one i'm going to be the great that like, there's no there's not an ounce of disbelief in her. and i thought that Claudia gadalia fight really showed that when she definitely lost those first two rounds and then just put the pace on her and took those final three to, to keep hold of her belt um, but the, the the damage she did to jessica pena uh, carla esparza the way she finished her carolina uh, kokovic god i can't even say it um the stuff Kiki. that she does uh, KK, thanks, buddy. Um, <laughs> the stuff that she does um, to other human beings, other female fighters in that in that cage, uh, yeah. is is unlike anybody else. So I, I think this will be. 
uh, I think two or three rounds, um, but I think it'll end in a finish, and I think it'll be a pretty brutal statement. And and let's not take away as well; she is going to break Ronda Rousey's record if she does um, if she does manage to get this win. So that's another little underlying story that that she is well. If, like the UFC aren't doing much about that, but she all through her social media she's talking about that being a a, a point of history she wants to make. So love Nama Yunus, but just think Yin Jacek is is at the minute pretty much unbeatable in that division. Yeah, yeah, definitely, mate. Let's move on to the co-main then. It's Cody Garbrandt and it's TJ Dillashaw. And uh, <laughs> I like uh, I like all the back and forth here. And uh, I like like hearing all the fine questions that are coming in for the back and forth. This a lot of love for Cody and then a, a lot of love for TJ as well. I, I was uh, maybe not surprised, but um, I just like that uh, there's, there's strong support because that means there's going to be a lot of eyes on the card. So, Brian, I'll start with you this time. Um, who you got? Who's walking away with the title in this one? This is, I mean, this has got everything. This should, this should headline any fight card that they put on anywhere because it's got, it's got the background, it's got the story, and I don't know if it's, if it, I mean, this card is is amazing. This is, this is from. We've had some good fights and some decent cards up to this point this year. We've had some terrible cards as well, but the run into Christmas is is to New Year is phenomenal, and this card is just so stacked. But I feel like the UFC aren't aren't selling these stories properly. I, I think because they put so many on and they've got so many stories to tell, they're not really telling any, any of them. We, we, there's the, the history between these two, the 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 hatred, the politics, the the, the, the brotherhood that they lost when they uh, Dillashaw went away, the, the, the feud that's still going on is something which is a, a variable in this fight, which we don't know if it will affect how it will affect either of them when they step in there as far as will they stick to their game plans will it become too emotional what not, neither of them have ever had to prepare for a fight like this where they're, they're basically fa- facing somebody that that they grew up through the sport with so that mm. angle for me is makes this so interesting um the other other side of it is dillashaw previous champion uh, had that close fight with cruz cody garber nobody expected him to do that to dominic cruz nobody Amazing. uh expected the, the composure the flair the showmanship that he put on yet alone that just just the um, the devastating combinations and stuff that he, he took he took Cruz apart with. So technically, they're, this, they're two of the um, the most and, and this weight division is always fantastic bantamweight. Technically, they're two of the best in the sport. Um, the underlying thing with the story behind it is just wonderful. Um, but it's so hard to pick. With me, I, I think Garbrandt is uh, if he can continue in the vein and the trajectory he has done all the way through to where he rips that title off of Dominic Cruz I, th- I think he could put a um, yeah a, a, a really good performance in against Dillashaw but there's so many X factors around this fight that, that this this is this is the one I'm really looking for. this is the one I'm most looking forward to yeah yeah it's, it's really an exciting fight and, and you're right probably could headline as well let's get um, Kyle's thoughts on this Kyle your thoughts and your predictions for this fight sir yeah, I think this is my favorite fight on the card. Um, I think it goes this fight, and then it's the Stephen Thompson fight, um, and then it's the Rose fight. Um, and then I would probably put James Vick, Joe Duffy in front of the Bisping fight. I really could care less about that main event, but we'll get there. Um, <laughs> so with, 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 Co- with Cody TJ, I mean, you know, it, it depends. So if the TJ that just fought Lineker, if that's the TJ that shows up, I don't know how anyone can beat him. The, those <laughs> takedowns he was doing, there's no way to stop That's them. True. Oh, there's God, nothing yeah. that any human being would would be able to possess that would stop that takedown from happening. It was, I mean, it's almost like he invented a takedown. I mean, it was crazy, right? Mm-hmm. And then you go to Cody. If the Cody you just saw against Dominic Cruz shows up, well, how in the hell are you going to stop that? <laughs> so it's like, I don't know, man. This is crazy. I think this is going to come down to who shows up that day. So, I mean, as far as making a prediction is concerned, um, I, to me personally, I think it's more likely that TJ Dillashaw shows up. Uh, I, I think I think Dillashaw is much more in the head of Cody Garbrandt than it is than it is reversed, and I think that might surprise a lot of people. But that's just how I view it. I think Garbrandt's the one that's being overly aggressive. Garbrandt's the one that continues to talk about the narrative of Dillashaw leaving. Um, Garbrandt was the one that was being really, really aggressive on the Ultimate Fighter. I mean, it it, it seems like he's the one that's really bothered by it, I and mean, he's the one who's going to come in there and try to rush. See what what made Garbrandt. 
what allowed him to do that to Dominic Cruz was that he was able to stay back and not be aggressive. I'm worried that he can't do that against TJ. I'm worried that he's going to come in and try to press forward and try to get a flashy knockout to prove a point, and it's going to cause him to continue to get taken down, taken down, taken down, taken down. Cody's a really, really good wrestler, but boy, those takedowns from TJ were something else. And I know that Lineker is not Cody Garbrandt, but Lineker also has just such a strong base. Yeah, so right. like, just taking him down means something. You know, there's a reason why a lot of people don't take him down. Um, so, yeah, I I'm gonna go with Dillashaw, but ever so slightly, and it's and it just comes down to I think he's more likely to show up that day, and I think Garbrandt's much more likely to make mistakes here. I also think that um, the stuff that he did against Dominic Cruz is pretty easy to game plan against. So I think I think Dillashaw will be able to do that. Definitely, mate. Let's get straight to the main event. No messing about. GSP, Michael Bisping. I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start the opposite side of the pond, and I'm going to start with Kyle. Uh, what's your thoughts? Is uh, is GSP coming back to take that title from the count, or is it Bisping for you, sir? Insert fart noise here. I just. <laughs> I don't. I just don't care. I. I. I I enjoy the novelty of this. You know what I mean? So, like, all jokes aside, I get it. It's like a novelty, right? Bisping or or GSP's been out for four years. You know, Bisping is this kind of underrated champion that gets a lot of flack. But, I mean, look look what he did to have to get here and blah, blah, blah. And Mm -hmm. I get it. There's, like, novelty here. And Bisping's a really good shit talker and blah, 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 blah. But, boy, I just don't care. I just don't care. There's no there's no result to this fight that would make me interested in either person's trajectory. If Michael Bisping beats GSP, I literally don't care. You know, I don't care what happens next. If GSP beats Michael Bisping, I probably care about that more because that's weird that he was able to take that much time off and then move up weight class and beat Bisping. But I mean, I just I just don't care. So uh, okay, prediction wise, um, I personally think that GSP can get this done. But you're talking about the, the amount of X factors in this fight. I mean, I don't know if you could even count them. I mean, you have no idea what Bisping is going to be able to do against a guy like, you know, George St. Pierre with that level of, of you know, takedowns. And, and it's not really wrestling, but you know what I mean? With yeah, that level, yeah. I mean, who knows what he's going to be able to do against something like that. Uh, it's definitely something that's not happened. Um you know, how much does a four years affect it? You know, Bisping just had a surgery. What kind of effect is that going to have? This is a re- this is the biggest fight that Bisping's probably done as far as marketing wise. What, what 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 does that mean to him? Right. Like there's just so many X factors here that uh, I certainly would caution anyone from betting any type of money on this. Just stay the hell away from it. This this fight feels like the Pro Bowl to me. Like you wouldn't bet in, in football the Pro Bowl. Like you wouldn't bet money on the Pro Bowl because what in the world you can't predict that thing. And that's essentially what this fight feels like to me. So I would stay away from it as far as betting on that on all that is concerned. But I kind of think GSP can get this done here. I think uh, I think the writing's on the wall for for him to be able to just take Bisping down a couple times and hold him there and call it a day. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at a lot of the uh, the questions and comments. That's me. The polite way of saying it is. Um, USADA playing a factor in GSP, but I'll get to them later. But, but, <laughs> um, before I get to that, uh, Brian, your thoughts, your predictions for the main event, GSP and the count? I, I, I care for it a little bit more, uh, <laughs> a bit more for my friend across the pond. <laughs> but, um, but, but I understand fully. I, I think the UFC have sort of thrown a Hail Mary at this car because it's Madison Square Garden again. They, they want something that might give them the Conor McGregor effect. Yeah. They had that, um, uh, the, the, the most, uh, gate, the highest gate, sorry, that Madison Square Garden has ever had for any sporting event, which is one, which is fantastic for the, for the Conor McGregor um, fight last time for their debut there. But GSP is and, and Bisping is, is not the fight that's going to do it. That's not the one that I think, I, I, I think, G- GSP coming back is is interesting, but you've got to take into account the game's changed so much uh, through the McGregor era. We have got a whole influx of new fans who have no mm. idea what GSP did or what he meant to the sport or some of the wins he got and uh, why he was so important, especially in that welterweight division. Um, and the UFC have not filled that gap. They've not been feeding fans with previous fights, with interviews of previous opponents, um, with uh, anything like that where people can catch up and go, oh, oh I've heard of him. Yeah, but shit, yeah. This, this, this guy's this guy's something. This this him returning to the sport after, especially the strange way he left, 
there's a massive story, and again, I think they've they've just not told it. I think they they're, they're not doing that a service. Whether, whether Why do you think fight... that is? Sorry, Brian, just to interrupt. You're you're yeah. absolutely right in what you're saying. Why do you think they've just um, is is it like an ego thing that with the promotion of GSP is it lazy or what? I, I think I think it's part of the new era of of this the, the UFC. When we say new era, they've they've been uh, the, the the new owners have been there for about eighteen months now, but it's. Uh, I think they're just throwing big names out thinking that will do it. And what they used right. to do so well was tell stories, was uh, weave a web that you could that through the divisions where you were always wondering what was going to happen next. Whereas now they're just searching for, for big fights. And I, I think they just they just missed the boat trying to fill that big void of, of chasing all that money and trying to fill all these cards with, with fights that will give them decent pay-per-views so they can start turning turning the second half of the year around. And I've got to be honest, the, 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 the cards on the run-in, to the new year are awesome but um but i think they're just missing the boat here and i think with gsp especially this is a this is massive him coming back to the sport i don't think it's the right fight for him to come back to i'd love to have seen him step back into the welterweight division uh, woodley Woodley would have been so much more interesting that's the one so much more interesting do that and i i um uh i i I just think that for, for this, it's uh, it's it's not been packaged properly to really be that the crown. And what this card is amazing. You look, I'm staring at it right now. I'm excited about so many fights and so many, um, yeah, it's just so many matchups on this card. Uh, as far as how these two match up together, now this is let's drop a few names. I've met both of them, and the first thing I thought when I saw Michael Bisping was Jesus. He's bigger than I expected him to be. Right. And the first thing I thought when I met George Saint Pierre was. He's smaller than I expected him to be. So, <laughs> so there was, um, uh, and I'm, I'm, he's a nice. He's obviously very athletic, very thick, and beautiful eyes, very soft skin, and uh, a touch oh. to die for. But what is bless me like? <laughs> That's, uh, Bisping's just rough, callous hands, mate. And uh, uh, I'm joking. But, <laughs> <laughs> bad breath. Um, uh, no, but 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 Bisping, Bisping is quite a big middleweight, and GSP is stepping up after all this time away. Um, and I think size will be a massive factor. I think Bisping's cardio will be a big factor. And as far as wrestling, the thing I would say about Bisping's defensive wrestling, when he came up against people like uh, Charles Sonnen and Brian Stan, he was able to negate them, taking him down and dominating him on the ground. And, and Sonnen is, is a decent wrestler. If, you, if he's in the so stand, they're powerful people. And I think GSP... With it, all the pressure of coming back, with how he copes mentally with things anyway, with uh, Bisping being uh, that cardio machine that can just go and go and go after taking damage, I think this will be maybe an interesting first couple of rounds. And then I think Bisping will start edging away. I, I think he's going to take this and I, th- I think he'll finish St. Pierre. And unfortunately, I think he'll be one and done. And that whole... Yes, that whole story of him coming back, that um, hero's welcome that he, he's never received from the UFC uh, is just going to be disappearing to, into the ether and, and that'll be it for, for the legacy of GSP. There you go, and that's your predictions. Let's uh, quickly get to the final part of the show, fan questions. And uh, just a reminder of the rules, guys. The only rule that we have is you don't have to wait your turn. I'll just throw them out there, and if you want to take them, take them. So let's start I've with got, face- I've got a buzzer oh, ready. Is a buzzer, got a buzzer, buzzer ready? ready. <laughs> I like it, mate. I like it. Let's do it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Facebook questions first. Michael Randon, uh, my buddy Mikey, has got in touch. Uh, got his blue belt today as well. Kudos to him. Um, what do the panel think about how the game uh, has evolved in the time since GSP retired? I just can't see him beating Bisping with his old fighting style. I guess, uh, Brian, you kind of touched on this earlier, but um, has the game passed him by, do you think? I don't know if it's passed him by or not. I, I, that's going to be the interesting thing. We know, we don't know what he's been doing. He's obviously still fit. He's still athletic, but competing and uh, in the cage and sparring in the gym are, are two totally different things. And sure. all the pressures, the lights, and all that sort of stuff. I think what has changed in the game is just how fighters market themselves, um, uh, how the cards are marketed, all that sort of side around the. Um, uh, the, the the sport as well as the backroom staff at the UFC so the people that he used to be used to the Burt Watsons and the people that would right. be friendly yeah. faces they've also gone he's he's walking into a new new organization new promotion um, so fighting style he's always had a, a style that, that can handle most people because of the wrestling base but how how he'll cope with all the other changes and, and feeling excuse the pun but in an alien world um, yeah that that'll be interesting Definitely. Let's move on then, guys. Uh, Kieran Myers asks, does Mark Gobier feel more confident for his fight against Walt Harris since he recently lost against Verdum, or if he feels less confident since Walt has just experienced fighting against one of the best heavyweights in the world? 
We didn't even get any experience. I mean, it, it, he didn't really experience it. He walked in there and got arm barred. And, you know, that was uh, I don't think there's any effect. I don't think there's any effect. I think they, you know, they needed they needed that fight because Verdum was going to be pissed if they didn't get him one. Well, here said, I'll do it. He walked in there. He sacrificed himself to the MMA gods, and now he's fighting Mark Godbeer. I don't, I don't think there's any change. I think the way that Mark Godbeer, Godbeer felt about the fight is the same and bald Harris is the same. I don't think there's any difference. Yeah, there you go guys. Uh let's uh, let's move on to Twitter then. So we've got at T Z Ishka. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh GSP is a has been. He will be awful now with the USADA testing. Mark my words, he goes down in the second. It wasn't really a question, <laughs> but thanks for your thanks It for wasn't really there. a question. Thanks, Very confident. I like uh, that. I hope he's got money on that. Uh, <laughs> moving on uh, Danny Win 86 which uh, one of these awesome fights will fall off the card for some or unforeseen reason place your Johnny Hendricks Johnny <laughs> Hendricks Johnny <laughs> Hendricks yeah I was going to say <laughs> that's the, be honest come on uh, yeah the, the most likely is that the jo- is Johnny Hendricks uh, winds up having an issue that's probably most likely yeah, I mean, I don't yeah. want to be pessimistic but yeah exactly Just, <laughs> right. I mean if you're looking at the entire card I mean, yeah. from top to bottom, I, there's really not anyone on here who's had issues. I mean, Joe Duffy got pulled at the last minute, and some of that, I think, was... I mean, didn't he get pulled, like, literally after the event had started because his heart rate was too high? Was I, that Joe Duffy, or who was that? I don't remember I don't that. I don't remember I don't, that being Joe Duffy. I don't remember who that was. Um, so then, yeah, if, if that wasn't Joe Duffy, because I'm starting to think it wasn't. Stefan Struve, I remember that was one. Was there not something Well, that happened that? to Struve. It happened to yeah. somebody else, too, but it wasn't Duffy, because I just looked, and he didn't have a fight canceled. So I don't remember who it was. Um, uh, but, OS, uh, OSP's had a couple. But honestly, just look at the card. It's just Johnny Hendrick's eyes. I can't take him off me. Let's, let's be yeah. honest. That's it. Johnny if Hendrix, you look at the whole card. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be. If Madison Square Garden, thank God Madison Square Garden will be close to a rib shack or something like that because uh, <laughs> that's his only worry. As long as he can come out of the cage and go directly to somewhere where he can get his greasy fingers and his beard full of barbecue sauce, he's going to be okay. But oh. if not... The start of this Excellent. podcast in the middle and the end has been nothing but shitting on Johnny. I would Hendrix. delete the start, mate, because Hendrix is off. Just delete the first 10 minutes. Okay. Do you think I'll be all right? <laughs> I just take out the first 10 and we're safe, right? That'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll right. smother myself in ribs. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on. At Else for Elf, uh, she tweeted us to say, What did you guys make of Colby Covington's post fight speech and did he get out of Brazil alive? <laughs> I think he got out alive. Um, Brian, I'll, I'll let you take it first. Oh, mate, he's, he, like, this is a human being that just just grates on me massively, and he's doing what he has to do. <laughs> There's that whole uh, the phrase Errol Hawani always uses to be be the squeaky wheel to get the grease, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But my God, there's ways of doing it with an ounce of class, and uh, he, he put out a little apology after that on <laughs> Twitter, which wasn't an apology. Oh, at that all. Wasn't oh really? I missed oh, that one. Yeah. Oh, mate. So this this came out as well, and yeah, yet again he just insults, and, and not in the not in the not with the humour or the finesse of Chael Sonnen doing his. Oh, I say that <laughs> he's talking mm-hmm. about Brazilian kids playing in the mud, but um, oh yeah, it's, saying it's, that they saying don't be offended because they don't have internet, so they can't <laughs> see they can't see what I'm saying. Jesus, so yeah. there's, there's a touch of class about that, mate. They, I'm joking, <laughs> but, um, but <laughs> this, this this guy, man, I, I, the problem is he's so good. His wrestling is so good, and you saw what he did to Maya. Um, that it's hard to find someone to beat him up, but I, I would like to invest some time in helping them find that person. <laughs> I, I think. Well, first of all, I want to talk about that fight, and this is a little bit off topic, but I just you you see this all the time, which is I'm, I'm going to call them the hindsight warriors. And after the fight <laughs> yeah. happens, everybody is sitting back and going, "Well, you know, just again, Covington keeps keeps getting hand selected opponents." Any every single person who said he had a hand selected opponent in Maya, all said that he would not be able to stand toe to toe with Maya. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. like you, you have all this hindsight that takes place. I was picking Colby Covington the entire time. I, yeah. I felt I felt pretty confident about it. But yeah, I mean, a lot of people, you know, afterward, just talking about how well it's you know it was it was a bad matchup for Maya. Well, where were you three days ago? Because three <laughs> days ago you were talking about how how this dude right. there's no way he's never yeah. fought anybody like this. There's no way Maya's a legend. Blah 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 blah. You know, and and yeah, he got he got pieced a little, pieced up a little bit on the feet, but let's not forget that Maya pretty much went toe to toe with Warren McDonald as far as in, in striking. 
So it's not – and Jake Shields right before that. He lost, but – Let's not forget, Maya's striking is a little bit better than people think it is, although he is pretty old. Um, but as far as just shtick is concerned, whatever. I, it's like he's doing what he has to do in that the amount of people who hate him right now is pretty astounding. So <laughs> he's obviously doing something right. I mean, there, people want to see him get murdered, you know, so he's doing something right. So good for him. Um, nothing's off limits. So whatever he said was whatever. I mean, you have to be able to deal with the backlash, right? But at the end of the day, I mean, nothing's off limits. He can say whatever the hell he wants to. So it doesn't matter to me. I, I would like for him to be better at it. I, I wish he had a coach. Can he hire Chael to do the yeah, backlash? Yeah, I was going to say, he's he a perfect get, guy, right? He, well, and he's, he's not as – he he's doing that. He's just not as good at it. Yeah. You know, he's not as good at it. So I would definitely like to see him get better. yeah. Yeah, I mean, Ryan, you're a stand-up, but it must be, seem to you like it's someone that's bombing, right? Oh, it's just, just yeah, grabbing at the 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 the, the lowest le- leaf on the branch, basically. Exactly. But... Yeah, that's yeah. what it felt like. It felt yeah. like, yeah, it felt like the yeah that old adage of you're you're kind of grabbing at the the lowest leaf there, right? Like low yeah. hanging fruit. You're grabbing exactly. at that low hanging fruit, but you're also you're also quite literally copying Chael Sonnen. You're just not doing a very good impression. You know, it, it, it'd be like if I was doing a GSP accent and I was talking like this. You know, it's like that's not that's not GSP, right? But that's what I'm trying to do. It's like he's trying to do Chael Sonnen. He's just not very good at it, you know. But a lot of people hate him, so he's doing something right. <laughs> he's getting heat and that's the only thing that really matters that's selling the tickets. There you have it, guys. Hey, Ty- Saturday. Tyron Woodley, Tyron Woodley spent hours tweeting about him. Hours. He will go back and forth. He's like Paul Malinaggi, though. He will go back and forth with fans on Twitter uh, for a whole day. And uh, but one of them, one of them is not me. So so (laughs) take that for what it's worth. (laughs) Anyway, we're short on time, so let's wrap up, guys. You have it. It's Saturday. It's UFC two seventeen. It's in New York, New York. And my thanks to Brian Lacey. Follow him on Twitter at Brian Lacey MMA. Check out Ultimate Couch Fans, and of course. To Kyle Steele, check out the Loudmouth MMA podcast and follow him on Twitter at Loudmouth MMA. Uh, I'll let the guys do the plugs now. So, Brian, if people need to get in touch or reach you, I've hit them up on Twitter. Let them know where else they can find your work, sir. Yeah, there's Twitter, but there's also the One Punch podcast with me, me and Brad Pickett. That's uh, uh, that's returning this week, so we're, we're excited to be to be back in the same room. So I'll be doing some more madness with him. But uh, yeah, same on Instagram at Brian Lacey MMA. It's all uh, Brian with a Y. Um, so yeah, yeah, check us out. I can't believe you're leaving us thinking about Colby Covington. That's how we're finishing this. Beautiful <laughs> part. Um, I was trying I'm, to get I'm away from Johnny Hendricks. Got, that's what it was. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'd rather be thinking about Big Rig enjoying some wings than Colby Covert <laughs> just grating me the wrong way. So I'm going to go to bed now angry. So thanks a lot. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Uh, Kyle Steele, uh, let everyone know where they can find you. Hit you up and um, check out your show. Yeah, definitely Twitter. I'm, I'm pretty active on Twitter. Brian, I just followed you right now. Oh, at Brian Lacey. Yeah, and I'll, I'll also follow you on Brian Lacey MMA. Look at me. I'm, I'm following you on both. Look at that, mate. I, I will return the favour and we can deal with slag off John for ruining our There you go. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. They're ganging up a but, uh, but, yeah, you can definitely find me on Twitter and uh, Facebook, you know, Loud Month MMA. The podcast is anywhere you listen to a podcast. So, wherever you're finding this, you can probably find mine, too. There you and, have uh, it, Yeah, guys. that's it. I got nothing else. Check out the Nicolas Cage movie review hour. John, ah, I appreciate I you it. plugging it. Love that's it, That's like mate. my favourite thing. That's my favourite thing to do, man. We do it, we do it <laughs> weekly, so I love it. You do it well, my friend. I'm John Boy McRoy, and uh, if you like this podcast, hit the like button, hit a share, do all that good stuff. We're on speaker and we're on iTunes as well. Uh, and we'll catch you next time on the round table. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as well. I'm on at Martial Arts Chat. And uh, of course, if uh, you want to check me out on Facebook, you guessed it facebook.com forward slash Martial Arts Chat. Thanks very much for your time, guys, and we'll catch you next time on the round table. <laughs>